Hello, I'm Greg Ninnis for interest.co.nz and today I'm talking with Greg Goldfinch who's the National Director of Sales and Leasing for Industrial Property at Colliers International. And Colliers have just put out what I think is an annual report, is it, on the industrial market or does it come out more often than that? We try Greg? and get uh, two or three out of it. Okay, so one of the things that um, I really noticed reading through it was that there was a, a, a hint of similarity between what's happening with industrial property and what's currently going on in the housing market, particularly in Auckland, mm -hmm. uh, where we're seeing rising prices. Uh, rents are going up, but probably not rising as quickly as prices at the moment, and that's forcing in investor yields down a little bit. What are the drivers of those trends, Greg? Yeah, sure. Well, we're certainly in a market, you're quite right there, Greg, where... Um, uh, we have businesses organically growing again, just on the back of the uh, economy, yep, yep. Um, which is very, very buoyant. And what's that? What that is meaning is uh, they are either needing new space or um, uh, larger footprints to the existing space that they're in. Right. And we've certainly seen a lot of take up of land and uh, vacant warehouses in the last eighteen months, mm. and that's now putting real pressure uh, on those users yes. in our market. So mm. consequently, we've seen. Uh, the lowest vacancy rate in our market that mm. we've ever seen, mm. and uh, that's growing by the month. So that's down to what um, in Auckland, I oh, think, early, early early twos. But if you speak to two percent, uh, that's that's, range, that's negligible, isn't it? It is. And if you speak to the the, the broker on the ground, he'd say it's zero for the yeah. good quality stock, mm -hmm. um, and only getting worse. Um, and, and is that because there's been a little bit, um, you know, there hasn't been a lot of development of of new properties coming through or, or the yeah. development that has been there just hasn't kept up with well, demand? Well, we've certainly seen some of the developers in our market spec building, um, but just given the uh, increasing demand, we're finding that they're leased before they're finished. Right. Um, so those that have had the courage to go ahead and do something, correct. it's been worthwhile for them? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And uh, we expect that trend to continue. We're certainly seeing a lot of spec building All right. activity out there. How's that affecting um, landlords and tenants? I guess the landlords are seeing um, rising rents that are starting yeah. to go up. Yeah. Um, but they, I guess prices are increasing faster than rents. Is that right? And their yields are uh, being depressed as a result. Yeah, yeah, they are. I mean, we've got, a, we've got an avalanche of money looking to be placed into the um, industrial market. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, with the, with the well-tenanted investment stock that the investors are all chasing, we have very, very little of it. And that's putting real pressure on our, um, right. on our on our yields and driving prices up. That mm. and of course the uh, very low interest rate environment that sure. looks set to remain for some time. Okay, yeah. I mean that's a, a worldwide trend in most asset classes. So this hasn't it escaped is. that at all. And I think I think for a long time the industrial sector has lagged behind in terms of uh, an asset class mm -hmm. and, and values in this country and maybe we're just starting to see it level out with the likes okay. of the commercial stuff. So what sort of investors are you see um, climbing into industrial at the moment? Is it the traditional players that have been there a long time or are you starting to see new players uh, oh, take an I interest mean, in it as well? A, it's a real mix of both. We've got a lot of um, private, private money mm -hmm. uh, certainly looking to be placed. We've got institutional Mm -hmm. uh, both here in New Zealand and abroad, uh, and then we've got the syndicators. Uh, and I think with the lack of investment options for New Zealanders, the, syndic the syndicators um, are offering them uh, a fairly decent return, okay. and consequently very uh, active in our market. Okay. A big industrial property obviously is going to be beyond the means of most private investors, um, but uh, so potentially syndications are a way of accessing that type of property yeah, that people that couldn't afford it otherwise. Absolutely, absolutely, mm -hmm. because you, you find a lot of the offerings that your mum and dad investors would like to have involvement with in the industrial market um, are corporate tenants and those those offerings might be 10 mil plus like you say out of the yes. reach of a lot of them that's why we're seeing um, incredible popularity with some okay. of the syndications all right the smaller stuff that you see the little um you know warehouse with a little office at the front of it out in the the industrial suburbs um is that performing differently to the to the big large scale um properties that have major corporate tenants in them yeah pr pr pretty much mirrors it again um because because you're in the dollar value that a lot of investors can afford i.e half a million dollars through to two or three million dollars we're certainly seeing 
um, situations where investors are willing to even take on some risk with that type of stock because yeah. of their lack of um, investment options out there. So market. that means maybe somebody with a short-term tenancy short-term or even a vacant tenancy, property. Buying vacant is a, yeah. is, is a big thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, people are just desperate to get that cash out of the okay. bank and into some real estate. And I mean, would the yields be even lower down at that end of the market as yeah, a result yeah. of that? Yeah, look, we're seeing um, yields uh, in that five, six mil less range. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, certainly firm at the moment by the month. Mm. Uh, we're starting to see very low sixes and we've had the odd occasion where those yields have dipped into the high fives right. too, which is uh, an area we've never been before okay. in the market. So. so I mean that was where we were seeing smaller retail properties and, and residential properties a year or two ago and now that's, that's sort of come into the industrial Absolutely. sector as well, Absolutely. okay, Absolutely. as people keep chasing those yields. Um, Industrial property caters primarily to its big warehouse space, storage of one sort or another, and then there's manufacturers who need need factories, basically. Are there differences in those two segments of the market? Yeah, I mean, look, um, 90% of the inquiry these days um, is for the newer um, high-stud clear span type warehouses, yeah. um, uh, and uh, certainly lesser demand of from tenants and occupiers for the for the lower stuff, the older dated manufacturing facilities, and uh, those types of offerings are tending to to um, uh, come out of the likes of the only hunger, Penrose, your traditional older uh, yeah. industrial areas. Um, but look, there's certainly still demand. Just just given how active the market is, there's demand right across the, the sure. industrial market, and we're certainly seeing. Um, a lot of activity from the owner-occupier type market mm-hmm. uh, for those lower stud offerings as well. Okay. Um, I guess one of the things that influences that is that we've seen a huge growth in importing and distribution mm. and, and obviously manufacturing hasn't grown like that or it might have even that's shrunk right. a little bit over the, the last few years. So that probably reflects demand there as it, well. It does. Okay. Someone said to me that they would become a big warehouse. <laughs> yeah, that's well. <laughs> pretty much true, I suppose. Um, and good on those manufacturers that are hanging in there and yeah. still doing it in this country C- certainly too. Certainly refreshing for us um, yeah. when we uh, market a property to be going through a factory and seeing activity and whatnot yeah. makes it a little bit more interesting okay. than going into a big empty All right. warehouse. Um, is, there, is there good development activity happening? I mean, uh, presumably um, investors are out there being active. I guess one of the things that might just make it a little bit difficult for them is the low yields, or are they just prepared to bite the bullet on that? Well, it's a mixture of the low yields and the the uh, availability of freehold land for sale. Right. So, and that, is that primarily an Auckland problem, or is it that primarily everyone? an Auckland problem? Um, although we're seeing a little bit, little bit of it down in Christchurch and whatnot. A lot of yeah. the big players are taking positions down there, um, and certainly in respect to the Auckland market, um, the well-known uh, traditional investors in our market really do have a bit of a mortgage now on the, f- the land that's left in the Auckland industrial market, mm-hmm. so they've certainly got a competitive advantage. I mean, it's very difficult for a developer to come along and buy a piece of industrial land these right. days because of the price they've got to pay, yeah. and then with rising construction costs and whatnot and the lower yield, it makes it... So these are major players, listed trusts perhaps, who yeah, have bought up over the years. Yeah, land, it's been their model over the years, mm-hmm. also a lot of the, you know, the, the well-heeled privates... Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's certainly stood them in good stead now okay. um, in a busy market. Do you think we'll ever see a real crunch where there, we've, we've got to make, people have to make a major decision, so maybe consider being outside of Auckland because there isn't the space? Yeah, there. yeah look, look, potentially. Um, there's certainly uh, some large industrial land holdings on the radar south of Auckland, the likes of Drury and Notwell Stevenson's, and, and then further south Pocono, and there's a little bit of stuff going on in Takamani. So mm. I think uh, within the next three to five years you're going to see some major action okay south, south and, and would south that area. would that be a, a shift in terms of certain types of activity would be pushed right out of the the main part of the city Look, i just i just think uh, any business requiring a reasonably large footprint um will be needing to look down in those areas because certainly if you take the more traditional these these tamaki penrose only hunger areas mm-hmm. uh, there's certainly not a not a lot of uh, large sites that can accommodate them in a fair bit around um, the airport still. Yeah. Um, that'll certainly hold the airport authority in good stead as we move forward, but there's, um, there's very little. I mean, there's a couple of um, major private plan changes through the Wirree area potentially happening, and there's a couple of quarries down there that may well come online, but um, you know, that's all up in the air. Okay. And um, just think moving forward that uh, 
those outlying areas are certainly going to have their day, and it'll be sooner, probably rather than, okay. um, than later. For tenants, then, if they're thinking of um, having to change premises, or anybody, any business out mm. there that's looking for premises in the industrial space, how should they approach the market? Well, they now? certainly need to be thinking of their property strategy early. Yeah, um, and uh, you know, a couple of years out minimum. Okay. Um, and uh, the sooner they get onto that, the better, because the issues we're facing are only going to um, increase as we get through the next couple of yeah. years. And that's irrespective of size or business type? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, we, we, we've got a real vacancy problem and land, land for sale issue um, from the small stuff right up to the big, big mm -hmm. um, footprint. So. Okay. And I guess those that are already in premises um, might start to feel a little bit of pain when their rents come up for review. Yeah, we're certainly starting to see a little bit of that now. Mm -hmm. And um, there's certainly pressure, you know, it's just a supply demand thing and certainly pressure on rentals um, as we speak. And the other thing that we're, uh, unfortunately for tenants, that we're getting pushback now from the landlords is um, incentives. Right. So if you go back two years, um, when uh, we were sort of coming out of the GFC, the landlord market, there was a bit of vacancy around and whatnot, and um, for the right business, they'd get some fairly hefty incentives. Right. Um, I suspect as we go through the year, we um, we may well see uh, those incentives diminish even more. So okay. they've probably been halved uh, from what they were mm -hmm. a year or two ago. Okay. But naturally, landlords are getting a little bit fussy and saying, well, right. with the lack of stock out there, why and, and what form are they typically taking at the moment? Do we see cash, or is it just fit-outs? Or Oh, look, a little bit of everything. I mean, rent-free rent is, is, is still a big one, mm -hmm. and then probably the most um, popular sort okay. of incentive being yep. out there. Um, all right. And in terms of just around the regions, um, I guess Auckland is it's the biggest market and we know we've got, you know, it's tight. Um, is, is that where things are most extreme in terms of supply and, and rent pressures and, and low yields and things yeah, like that? Yeah, I mean, in Christchurch, I mean, we all know what's happening in the residential market down there and, again, similar um, issues faced in the industrial sector down there and the yeah. construction costs are are uh, certainly heading north mm. and um, uh, again some of the main players have sort of wrapped up most of the land yep. down there. So, okay. um, but certainly um, uh, Christchurch probably not quite the extremes we're seeing in Auckland but certainly pressure on okay. down there. Are, are they getting on top of the supply problems down there with you know things being yeah. rebuilt and new, new yeah, they seem properties? To be, they seem to be, you know, people have been very patient mm -hmm. down there and it's taken a long time but mm -hmm. it's certainly um, gathering pace and okay. I think certainly the next year or two will right. be a big move forward for that market. And the other thing I see in the report is that um, the Wellington market, industrial market seems to be coming back um, as yeah, well. Yeah, been very you know, quiet um, for some time now but there's certainly been some uh, big sales action down there in the mm -hmm. last year which is encouraging for that mm. area. Is there anything in particular driving that down there? Uh, opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, investors looking down there where um, wouldn't say they've given up the ghost on Auckland, but, but finding it increasingly frustrating. So yeah. you know they start looking, uh, start looking at other markets, and obviously the yields are um, uh, well firming even down the likes of Wellington. So not not at Auckland uh, mm -hmm. numbers just yet. So okay, and um, demand down there is is strong or, or oh it's it's building it's, or it's it's fair yeah. you know and and and, and uh, increasing in line with um, the rest of the economy mm -hmm. I would say. Um, um, and look, only going to um, get get, get um, oh, sorry increase as uh, the supply in these other regions uh, gets harder and harder to fill. Great. So. Well, thanks for coming in today, Greg, and I'm sure our readers uh, will have a full copy of the report available on the website for our readers who uh, want to go and have a look at that. And uh, thanks for tuning in today on interest.co.nz.